guys, Super Happy here, back with another video. Before we start with this, remember to subscribe if you're new to this channel and like the video if you do end up liking it. And let's get on into it. So today's video is on these. These are the Fat Shark HD threes. We're gonna see whether or not these things are actually worth it in the year 2021. Uh, and the short answer is yes, they are very much worth it. But the long answer is a little bit more complicated than that. And with that, I actually want to talk about what you should be looking for when you go out and buy a pair of Fat Shark goggles in the used market or even the brand new market. Uh, we're gonna talk about what to look for and uh, which ones are really good in the used market and which ones are not. We're gonna be looking at four main categories, the Dominator V category, which is the V1, V2, V3. And then we're gonna look at the Dominator HD category, which is HD1, HD2, HD3, and the Attitude category from V2 to V6. Uh, and then finally, the HDO category, which is relatively new with HDO1 and HDO2. We're gonna talk about all four of those. We're gonna talk about which ones are uh, great in the used market, which ones are, are not, which ones you should buy, and which ones you should not as well. And, which, and things that you should be uh, wary of when you actually go out and try to buy them. I recently was on a little trip myself trying to find a good pair of used goggles for my little brother on uh, on the used marketplace and I found a good deal <laughs> and uh, I learned a lot about the old Fat Shark lineup and, uh, and I'm happy that I made the decision a while ago to buy these HD3s and we'll talk a little bit more about the HD3s uh, in a little bit. So to start things off, let's talk about three main things. These are the three main things that I'm going to be talking about when we actually look at goggles and they all have to do with resolution and the, the image that you see in the goggles. There are a lot of other different features that distinguish the different goggles from one another and the different versions of the goggles from one another, but I'm not gonna go super in depth into that because that's something that's um, more of a minor concern when uh, when I look for goggles. I, I really look for resolution and uh, aspect ratio and field of view. Those are the three main things that I really look for, resolution, aspect ratio, and field of view. The resolution I look for because obviously the clearer the picture or the more pixel density uh, the picture has, the clearer the picture is. Aspect ratio I look for because most of our cameras on our drones are four by three. And if you have a native 4x3 image going into a native 4x3 goggle, perfect, perfect match. You don't have any sort of cropping, but let's say you have a 16x9 goggle and a 4x3 quad, then you're going to have some cropping to actually make it fit into that 16x9 aspect ratio. And then let's say you have a 16x9 quad and you have a 4x3 goggle then you're kind of having some more cropping as well on the sides. Looking for that proper aspect ratio is uh, is important. So the field of view is very important and people look for resolution, people look for aspect ratio and all sorts of other features that they want in the goal. And that's perfectly fine, but having a good field of view is very important as well. Uh, let's say the field of view is the amount of screen that you actually see in your line of sight. So let's say this is uh, your line of sight right here. When you actually put the pair of goggles on, this is your line of sight. Let's say a pair of goggles has 30 degree field of view. That means 30 degrees of your vision is going to be covered by the screen, uh, which is quite tight. There are fat shark goggles that I'm going to talk about that have a 50 degree field of view, which means that there are a lot more, uh, a lot bigger chunk of your field of view is going to be covered by that screen. That's kind of important because whether or not you want to be more honed in or more immersive, immersed into uh, the, the image is, uh, is up to you. And that's a personal decision that you want to make. And I'm going to talk about uh, all those three main specs on a lot of these fat shark goggles that you're actually going to be seeing in the used marketplace. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be touching up on every single one of them, but, but I will talk about uh, a good majority of them. So let's talk about the HD3s. That's what I titled the video, whether or not the HD3s are worth it in the year 2021. And again, they are, in my opinion, worth it in the year 2021. These are a great pair of goggles, a spectacular buy in the year 2021, because uh, these, goes, these go for relatively cheap in the used market. You just got to slap a good rapid fire module or whatever module that you, you think is best onto there, and you have a great pair of goggles, because this is the best of three worlds, the aspect ratio world, the resolution world, and the field of view world. This has a 42 degree field of view, so you have a great, decent chunk of your vision uh, covered by the screen, and it's not too immersive, and it's not too like in the zone, and too like really squished into your field of view. Uh, it's it's a great uh, in between, and it has 800 by 600 degree, uh, sorry, 800 by 600 uh, resolution, which is great. That is a four by three resolution, which means most of your quads that have four by three cameras are natively going to be supported by this thing, which is great. Most quads nowadays are all four by three. Um, you know, most most cameras are mo you know being made for FPV are are four by three, which is which is great. So this is perfect for that. I would usually stay away from sixteen by nine. We'll talk about that when we actually get to the sixteen by nine goggles uh in that we're going to be talking about but hc3s they are a great buy i got these for about 250 with rapid fire module now that's a really good deal um 
you can probably find these for about 250 to 350 kind of range uh, i'd say keep it below 300 when you actually go and buy some of these let's actually set these down real quick and let's talk about all the other goggles that exist out there there are lots of them uh, and let's just rush through them real quick let's start with the dominator v series that's what i like to call them because they go v1 v2 and v3 these are great for racers because they have a really nice tight field of view all throughout the board so starting with v1 they have a 30 degree field of view and a 640 by 480 resolution which is four by three perfect for your cameras that um, most fpv quads have because they're natively four by three there's no cropping of uh, any sorts going on there uh, and then you have your v2 lineup which is a 32 degree field of view so you're getting two extra degrees of field of view a little bit wider uh, and that is 600 by 480 resolution which is weird it's different yeah you're you're going from four by three to five by four which is a little tighter i'm not sure why they did that i'm not exactly sure why they did that that's very weird and then they change it up again with the dominator v3s they go up to 800 by 480 which stretches it out on the sides to 16 by 9 resolution uh if you don't have a 16 by 9 quad camera then you won't be doing yourself any favors by buying the Dominator V3s because those are 16 by 9 resolution, 16 by 9 natively. So you are going to have some cropping happening with your FPV camera feed. So whatever your, ca your camera, if, you're, if it's seeing 4x3 and it's trying to put it into a 16 by 9 image, either there's going to be stretching or there's going to be cropping happening. So if you have a 16 by 9 native camera on your FPV quad, perfect. This is great for you. But if you have a 4x3 native camera on your quads or most of your quads, this might not be for you because I really don't appreciate 16x9. I just don't I just don't appreciate it. <laughs> I just don't think that's the best one for FPV. And that's just kind of a personal thing. But if you are all for it, 16x9 ratio, you're getting that 800 by 480 resolution display, which is great. And you're getting a 30 degree field of view. So it is again tight again. So it went from 30 degree to 32 degree and then back to 30 degree in the V3s. And then the aspect ratio is kind of all over the place in the Dominator V line. So, yeah, uh, these are great for racers. Uh, if you if you want, uh, I would stay away from V3s in my opinion. But uh, ultimately, the decision is up to you. Moving on up, the HD series, my favorite series because I own the HD3s. I am partial to it. I admit, uh, and these are great. These are spectacular. These are still relevant in 2021, as I mentioned before. And these are just overall great. All the HDs are really great. HD1, HD2, and HD3. Going down the line, we have HD1 with a 45 degree field of view, which is great. Very wide field of view. Uh, that is 800 by 600 uh, resolution. And that is 4x3. Perfect for 4x3 cameras. <laughs> that's what I've been talking about for a little bit. So 4x3, that's king in my opinion. And you're getting a 45 degree field of view. Great. And then you move up along the line to the, uh, into the HD2s and you have a 50 degree field of view. So you're getting five more degrees of field of view than the HD1s, which is great. Very wide, very immersive. You feel like you're flying because uh, of how much degrees of field of view you're actually getting in your, uh, in your goggles, in your eyesight. And this is still 800 by 600, which is four by three. Great. Moving on to HD3s, which are 42 degrees of field of view. Uh, you are getting shrunk from 45 in HD1s, 50 in HD2s, and now you're getting down all the way to 42, which I think is perfect in my opinion because uh, it's not too wide and it's not too tight. So perfect for me. Still 800 by 600 uh, pixel uh, resolution and 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So all in all, perfect, and I think that's great. I think the whole HD lineup is is great in general and uh, spectacular buy in 2021. I think uh, you should you should go for the HD2 and HD3. I would not go with HD1 because it is lacking a few of the features that you might want nowadays. So uh, yeah, let's move on into the Attitude series. So let's talk about the Fat Shark Attitudes. Fat Shark Attitudes are very unique in the fact that they actually provide a module that's already pre-installed and pre-embedded into the goggles itself. The HD lineup and the V, uh, the Dominator V lineup that I talked about and the HDOs that are very popular now all need to have an external module that you need to purchase separately and attached onto your goggles. That's just a, a thing that you have to do with all these other fat shark goggles, but not for the Attitude lineup. The Attitude lineup it has everything pre-built. It's a plug and play solution. You buy it. You put in your antennas, you plug in the battery, and you set it to the right 
um, uh, channel and you're good to go and you're up and flying and that's what makes the attitude lineup so great and that's why we're talking about it right now so the attitude lineup goes from the v1 all the way to the v6 v1 is kind of irrelevant so we're just going to knock that out of there we're not even going to let's not even we let's, let's not even talk about that <laughs> so that, starting with the attitude v2 we have a 35 degree field of view so decent field of view uh very very uh, uh average and uh it's good uh 640 by 480 resolution that is a four by three, four, four by three is king. So every time you see four by three, just thumbs up. And then you have your attitude V3s, which is a 32 degree field of view, so a little tighter. Uh, it's keeping that same resolution though at 640 by 480, which is four by three aspect ratio. Then you move on up to the attitude V4s, have the same resolution and the same field of view at 32 degrees field of view in 640 by 480 resolution. But you have to understand that every iteration you are getting a better receiver, a better overall receiver. So obviously the V2 receiver is going to be way better than the V6 receiver and everything in between going to be better than the last one. So that's why even though the resolution and the field of view is the same and there's not much difference in that regard, it's better because it's newer and it's newer tech and it's just better, more refined uh, tech from, uh, from the V3. So uh, moving on up to the exciting one. This is the Attitude V5. This has a 30 degree field of view. I know it's kind of tight. Uh, it's the same field of view as the Dominator V1s, but it has OLED. First time we see OLED uh, in our listings today. Uh, this is a 640 by 400 resolution. So you are losing a little bit of a, a little, little bit of a pixel count right there, but you are getting OLED. This is a weird aspect ratio of 1.6. I'm not exactly sure what the actual aspect ratio is, but it is uh, 1.6. If you if you divide the numbers, uh, it's it's very weird. <laughs> a 16 by 9 is like 1.777. So you're getting closer to that 16 by 9 kind of shape. Very odd. I'm not exactly sure why they chose that. Other people can probably tell you why. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but it's great. Uh, everyone likes it. Everyone everyone likes it. Just it's great. It's a great, you're getting OLED. OLED is really nice, crispy, really nice dark, super nice contrast. You're getting a really nice display with the Attitude V5s. Yeah, even though it has a tighter field of view, you are getting a really nice contrasty display. Now moving on up to the Attitude V6s, these are the newest ones, and the highest resolution that we've seen so far, 1280 by 960. That's four by three, I believe. And that is a 39 degree field of view, uh, 39 degrees field of view. That's great. It's getting close to that 40, uh, 40 degree field of view mark. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. So let's talk about the HDO lineup. HDO lineup is awesome. It's got all that OLED. The O stands for OLED and O stands for awesome. Get it? Um, yeah, that, that was cringy. But uh, the HDO lineup is awesome. HDO is awesome. It's got that OLED, really nice, crispy contrast image. Uh, it's got the OLED that I was so raving about in the Attitude V5 and V6 lineup, but now we have the option to add external modules because it's kind of, well, you kind of need an external module for the HDOs. They have like this, it's it's basically HDs, but with OLED. So yeah, uh, it, it's uh. It's awesome. Uh, the HDO ones are 37 degree field of view, so you're getting a decently wide field of view. And it's 1024 by 768 resolution. That's 4 by 3, 4 by 3 for the win. And then you have your HDO twos with a 46 degree field of view. Very nice wide field of view. And 1280 by 960 pixel resolution display. And it's OLED and it's super nice and it's awesome. So that kind of concludes it. Uh, I would, if I was to recommend one from each of these categories, at least one from each of these categories, I would say from the Dominator V series, I would say the Dominator V2, even though it has that weird five by four aspect ratio, the Dominator V2 is pretty good. Uh, from the HD series, I would say the HD threes, because I have them, I'm biased towards them. I think these are awesome. From the HDO series, Either HDO is awesome, okay, it's got OLED. From the Attitude series, I'd say the Attitude V5 and V6 are awesome because they both have OLED. I'd say the Attitude V6 is way more worth it than the Attitude V5 because you are getting a lot more resolution and a lot more field of view and better OLED tech. So yeah, that concludes it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I do have to reiterate that I only really touched up on the resolution and kind of the visual aspect of these goggles because there are many differences between them all uh, with all these minute features that they, they can offer when you upgrade from one to the next. So 
that is it for today's video if you have any questions please do comment down below i will be more than happy to answer them and uh yeah let's uh let's let's aim for 500 subs <laughs> i got 400 subs thank you so much for 400 subs and uh yeah see you in the next one